Hey there, YouTube crew. I'm Shayna Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today. So we are in for a real treat. Um, we are going to be tackling the ever popular holiday gnome. Yay. Um, this adorable little fellow uh, is a little different than the previous gnome videos I've done in that he is in a full setting background. So he has a background, he has a foreground, he's holding a little sign here. Um, so in addition to the gnome itself, we're going to be adding in some other elements. Now we, I have other videos, I'll link right here that go over drawing, how to draw a gnome, how to paint the gnome itself. I'll be doing everything from the painting phase um, all the way till the end, but the drawing phase I won't be doing in this video. So if you do want to learn the drawing part, which is super easy, you can definitely do. You can check out this other YouTube video, or if you want a downloadable for this video, um, where you can actually just get a traceable where you can print out and trace, um, you can go ahead and join my studio crew. And that is just a month monthly membership. You can find the link in the description to this video. So let's get started with our garden gnome. Nope, he's not in a garden. He's in a forest. We're going to get started with our little holiday forest gnome here with his little sign that says Merry Christmas. So we'll be adding some stamping at the very end as well. So check out the description. Don't forget to like and comment on this video and let's get started. All right, here we are. Now with our gnome, I am going to be using a pretty cool color palette. So I'm going to be using blues for the gnome, grays for the beard, a little pinky peachy for the skin tone, green for the tree, and a little bit of grays and purples for the snow in front. The only thing that's gonna be really a warm, warm color is gonna be the sign, which is gonna be have a little brown in it. And then I'm also gonna stamp on this a holiday kind of greeting or message on there. So I'll show you my acrylic um, and silicone stamps as well. Sorry, they're silicone stamps with an acrylic block, but we'll get to that at the end. So first we're going to, and pardon my messy palette here, I was just doing a color tone tutorial on how to change up your holiday greeting cards with all different color palettes. That is part of my Studio Crew classroom, so you can definitely check that out. So this gnome, he is gonna be in these dark phthalo blue, one of my favorite color combinations. So I'm gonna use phthalo blue and Haynes Gray. So it makes this beautiful navy color. I'm going to clean out this palette over here. So I have some room to work with this. So I'm going to make this color again over here. So phthalo blue, Haynes Gray, some more phthalo blue. All right. So that's a really nice dark color. So for our hat, I am going to be, it's going to be a rounded shape. I'm going to start by painting under the bend here, which is going to be one of the darkest parts in shadow. And I'm going to move quickly. This is 100% cotton paper, so I have the luxury of the fact that it stays damp for quite some time. I don't have to rush, rush through it. So I'm laying in my darker parts and then I'm just gonna take a clean brush with water on it to blend it out. Gosh, I love working on cotton paper. Cause if that was on, so you do have to work even more quickly when you work on not cotton paper. I'm just adding a little bit more color over here. I'm gonna add some under the crook here because that's going to be in shadow a little bit as well. But you can see I have this kind of lighter area in the center. Um, and I'm going to have a little bit lighter area on top here. And that just gives a little shape and form to our hat. A roundedness, if you will, to it. And I'm going to go here. I'm going to go back and forth. A little more color on the edge here. There we go. Back and forth, blending that in. 
And then I have this other brim here. I'm actually gonna make the brim the same color, but I'll show you in just a second. I'm gonna, so the crease, so the brim is kind of folded up, so it's gonna have a darker crease right here. So I'm putting super concentrated color right there. Put a little bit on the bottom. And then same thing, I'm gonna take my wet, damp brush and blend it out. So the center of this kind of rolled hat here, like this rolled up little brim on here, is coming out towards the viewer and you can see where it indents. And I'm gonna actually take a little Payne's Gray right now while this is still wet. Oops, probably a little too much probably a little too much, but that's okay. I'm gonna rinse off my brush, I'll pull some of that out. Look at me being like a super sloppy painter right now. You too can be a super sloppy painter if you follow all my video tutorial instructions. All right, we're gonna calm it down a little bit here. Rinse off my brush. And I'm just gonna start to pull out some of this color. So the goal when I originally did that was just to add a little bit of deepness to the crease. And I wanted to do it when it was still wet on wet because I wanted it to um, blend softly, but I just got a little carried away. I had a little too much paint on my brush. It was going a little too quickly, but that's okay. I am painting very sloppily though. Hold on, let me get myself under control. So I'm just pulling out some of the color, some of that darker color that I put in, and I'll go back and I'll do another layer to kind of blend this all together. I'm just gonna blend this back and forth this way so it all dries at the same time. There we go. So I'm just gonna leave it. So now you can see we have a nice little roll. It's creased there, but it is still the same color blue. And I just add a little more Payne's Gray. I'm just adding on a little more blue. So it's really all the same color, but it has a nice little soft crease there that looks like it's rolled up. So that's our hat. So let's do our robes. These, you don't have to be quite as, they're not as predominant as the hat in the piece. You can kind of just, and they're all under his beard. They will have some wrinkles and waves to them, but you can kind of just paint them all in a relatively smooth wash. There's a few areas of lighter and darker. That's great. That can just be wrinkles in the robe. one side, the other side. I would say though, if any part is lighter or darker than the other, the part closest to the body, this part I'm painting right now should be darker than what's kind of fading away from the body over here. There we go. And then he has some sleeves here. I'm just gonna paint in those sleeves. I will create a little separation between the sleeve and the bottom of the robe by just putting a little bit darker color right underneath. So another sleeve, his hand is down over here. And I just put a little shadow under there. There we go. So most of his, or all of his clothing for the most part is done, except for his shoes. I haven't decided, I might paint his shoes red instead of black, just to give it that little pop of color um, holiday spirit. So that's the majority, or that's almost all of his clothing. Let's move on to the background. Our hat is pretty much dry, so we don't have to worry too much about that, but I'm gonna paint in the trees in the background. So for that, 
I am gonna use a little sap green and phthalo blue to make this kind of beautiful, rich green color. So sap green, little phthalo blue, darkens it, makes it a little cooler. And all we're gonna do is, I have these lines out here are the shapes of the tree. So I'm gonna start with a lighter color and I'm actually gonna switch to a larger brush for this. Okay, I'm gonna, I have my Princeton Aqua Elite. It's a large brush, holds lots of paint and water. And I am just going to, with the light, the a light version of this green, so it's not very concentrated. We'll get to that. I am just gonna go back and forth, dab, 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 to kind of fill in this whole background. I'm gonna do the same thing here. There's another tree, they're gonna overlap, it's fine. This is just layer one. So lots of water. I'm gonna go right up to the hat and just around it kind of like this. And you're just creating little bits of texture, but you do wanna keep that kind of pointed edge at the top. All right, and these are gonna look like big blobby trees right now. That's okay. Okay. We're gonna, gonna come right down to the sign. We're gonna work our way around the sign. Drop in just a few little bits of color. this side of the sign around his little mitten so someone I think commented on one of my videos I wasn't really sure what her comment said if it if it was referring to me but she's like what's that accent where you don't say the T in words like mitten and kitten I'm assuming she's referring to my accent <laughs> I feel like I say the T's in mitten and kitten but I'm not like super pronunciating them like mitten and kitten, but mitten and kitten. Um, but anyway, if that's what you hear, let me know if I have a funky accent. <laughs> All right, and then we're just gonna go around our little puff ball here. So this part does take a little bit of delicateness on your part, because you gotta get between this area here on the hat. You could do this step first if you wanted to do this before the hat, but I think it's fine after. And in here, I might even do a second layer on my hat and cape cloak, because as it dries, it does lighten quite a bit and turns into a grayish little gray blue color. All right. And then I'm gonna even rinse my brush out more, make even lighter colors and kind of fill in some more spots here in the background. Layers and layers. So this is a big forest behind him. Beautiful. And we're gonna let all of that dry. We want this to be kind of light and airy and a little out of focus in the background, okay? There we go. All right, we're gonna leave it now. So I just dab, dab, dabbed all the way through. Now we are going to tackle while that dries, we don't want to paint anything up here. So we can't do the sign or the his mitten in here or another coat on the hat because it might um, bleed into the rest of the background. So let's move to our foreground. And I'm going to take a little neutral tint, which is like you could use um, black but with a little bit of really, really, really watered down and maybe with a little bit of purple. 
in it because I'm going to take this neutral tint and add a little purple. Maybe a little more purple. And then add a ton of water. As you can see here. So I'm just picking up like droplets of water so that when I swatch this out, it is a barely there color. So that's still pretty dark. Let me rinse my brush off completely. There we go, that's even lighter. So you can see that it's a very, very light gray color. And if you wanna warm it up a little bit, like I'm gonna put a little bit more purple tone to it. Cause this is gonna be on our snow banks. You could do a blue tone to it also, but I feel like purple is gonna give me a little bit more variation in color in this one. All right, so I have a very, very light grayish purple toned color. So we're going to put in our snow and all snow is are you're painting the shadows. So I'm painting in a few little drifts and as this dry, it'll even lighten more. So here's a little snow drift back here. A little bit here. And even if you wanted to, let's see, what could make this even more interesting? I'm gonna put a little bit at the base of our gnome here as a little shadow. You know, he's standing on the snow, casting a little bit of a shadow. And you could make these more dramatic, like big banks of snow and big drifts, but mine are just all kind of flat. A little bit of snow, you know, a bank of snow back here. All right, and you can blend them out as much as you want. But the white of the paper is pretty much the snow. We're just painting in some shadows that it, the snow banks are casting on the ground. Little piles. Or that other things are casting on top of the snow too. Like if you had a tree or something like that somewhere. All right, so that is our snow on the ground. And now very similarly for the beard, you can see I have lots of little pencil lines in there. So I did draw in um, a wavy kind of textures for the beard. I am gonna now put them in in this very light gray color. I have, it's much better to use a kneaded eraser. It's not gonna leave all these little specks of eraser on your page. But I didn't have one at hand, so. So with that same light gray color, you could even warm it up a little bit with a little bit of like a tint of red or orange to make it a little warmer, a little almost browner color, but. All right, so, but you still want it to be super, super light. Swatch it out first before you even put it near it. That's like, mm, that's a little dark. I'm gonna add a little more water. And I'm gonna rush, run, rinse my brush off completely and then pick up that paint with a clean brush. Now, this guy is definitely gonna have some shadow around his nose. This big old honker is gonna leave a shadow there. I know it looks funny right now, but jagged shadow. And then with the tip of my brush, I am gonna paint in some shadows that are like the separation in the beard. But see how light this color is? The biggest mistake people make is they just start too dark and then their lines are too harsh. And when you're painting in shadows, they don't have to all be tiny, thin, thin lines. They can be. But like right around here, I'm just going to actually put in quite a large shadow. Or this whole chunk of hair could be like casting a thicker shadow on like what's below it. You see what I'm saying? Like some of them are bigger. And then at the bottom, there's a lot of separation of pieces and little chunks. 
And don't worry, it will come together, I promise. Okay, and then with a slightly darker gray, I'm gonna go in and add just a little bit more definition around the nose. That's still wet there, so that's good because I want it to be little soft transitions. And just a few spots with a tiny bit more definition. And it's okay to go slow. Like I'm going really fast, like do a couple, do a section, do a little bit, and then pause for a second and step back and like look, like what was successful, what didn't you like? All right, now it looks weird still because the nose is perfectly white. Once that we get a little color in there, it'll be great. All right, so for this noon, for our skin tone, let's see, let me start you from the beginning instead of halfway through. So for skin tones, there's lots of different ways. You might have a skin tone palette, great, use one of those colors. If you're not even sure where to start, I like to start with mixing some magenta. So I'm taking a very, very light magenta. This is gonna be a Nordic gnome. It's gonna have a light, lighter skin tone. And I am gonna take a little yellow, cadmium yellow, which starts to orange it out a little bit. Okay. And if it's feeling too orange, you need it to be a little more gray. I'm gonna take some ultramarine and this ultramarine is gonna to start to gray it out and neutralize it, but I don't want gray skin, okay? So if that becomes too gray, I wanna pink it back up a little bit. I'm gonna go back with the pink, a little bit of yellow. So you're just, depending on the color skin you want. So I want kind of a pinkier color. So I have a nice pink color. If it's too purple, if it's too purpley, that's a little purpley. Add more yellow. And now we have a much browner, warmer skin, uh, but I want it to be a little bit pinker and lighter. Add more water. So close. I'm adding a little Diver Light yellow, which is a warmer yellow. There you go. See all those different skin shades? Skin is the hardest. Okay, so don't get frustrated and give up. Just keep going until you get the color that you want. Swinging each way. So I'm going to take my skin tone. Now that it took me forever to mix that, my gray is dry. I'm going to put the darkest color around the outside and especially under the brim. Okay, so now I have a weird round shape in the middle. I'm gonna take a clean brush with clean water and I'm gonna start to add the water to the center. And then I'm just gonna gently push that out to meet the color. And that will start to bring the color in but leave a highlight in the center. Okay, and then you can start to, after it's dried a little bit, we're gonna let it dry a little bit more. You can start to add some more color to the edge. We're not gonna let it dry completely but I need it to dry a little bit, otherwise it's just gonna blend all in. But if I want darker color on the outside to make it feel round, I'm gonna let it dry a little bit. I'm gonna watch it as it gets to like a luster sheen, not super shiny, but not completely matte either. I'm gonna start to add, I'm just gonna make up some more of this. When we do that, lighten it. So as that dries, I think it's we're almost there. So I'm gonna start to add this. So you can see it's still, it's still wet and it's still bleeding out, but it's not disappearing completely like right away. It's still, it's holding its form a little bit on the edge. There we go. And we're gonna let that dry 
And this nice little nose, we're gonna let that gray dry. Some of our pink is, you can't tell because it's so light, but some of the pink is bleeding into the gray. I'll just blot that out. Which is just keeping the gray wet so it's not giving it getting a chance to completely dry. Okay, so there we have a nice little background, which we have to add more to. And we have his face done and his beard. Let's make the mittens and the shoes, the mittens, 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 and the shoes. I'm going to be self-conscious of that red. I'm going to use a lizard and crimson for this. So my little mittens here, I'm just going to paint in again, nothing fancy with this. Just paint them in red. So this one is just a little, there's no thumb that you can even see. It's just a little thing sticking out the bottom there, but I love, you know, this gives us a nice little contrast, a little pop of color. Everything else is cool and kind of darker muted colors. And this red is just a little pop. Go with holding the sign. And I'm even gonna make your shoes red. I'm gonna leave a little white spot here. I've drawn it out in the traceable for a highlight on top there. You can always go back in with bleed proof white or a gouache or an acrylic and add a little bit of white there. Can't go back in with white watercolor. It won't do what you're thinking it will do. It'll just be transparent. Okay, so some little highlights on top of the shoes. Love it. Love, love, love. Okay, we're at 25 minutes. I'm trying to keep these videos like 30 minutes or less. This one's gonna be a little bit longer uh, just because we have a few extra things to do. So I'm just adding a little more gray, same beard gray, just a little bit more concentrated right underneath this guy as a shadow. There we go. Okay. So we need to do our sign and the rest of our background. So let's do our sign. We're gonna use, what are we going to use? I'm gonna use um, either Burnt Sand or Van Dyke Brown. I'm gonna use Van Dyke Brown. Coors Van Dyke Brown is a little, it's a little red to it. So I'm gonna use that one. But I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. I'm gonna do like a light brown wash on this sign. Cause then I'm gonna go over it again with a darker brown to give it a little bit of a wood texture. Okay, so light brown. It's got a little knob at the top. Don't forget the wooden holder, the stake or whatever it's called. All right. I'm gonna take that same Van Dyke Brown. Now this is not dry yet, so. Now wait for it. All right, I'm rinsing off my brush completely. And I'm gonna start to blend these out. But leaving parts a little stripey. that dry it's going to keep transforming a bit since it is wet on wet there we go 
go. And then I am going to do more on the background, okay? So the sign is gonna dry. We're gonna put a nice little stamp on it. But while that does that, we're gonna come back to this background and give it a little bit more definition. So more sap green, more phthalo blue, makes a nice dark color. And we're not gonna really water it down at all, okay? So I'm gonna start to put in some trees that are gonna be more in the foreground. And I do that by just taking my brush and remembering, you know, trees are narrow at the top and then they get wider at the bottom. They skip around. And you can, if you want, um, because the whole background is green, you would have to go back at this point and use bleed proof white for snow on here, which we can definitely do. Or even just, we could make it snowing. So there's like, no flakes coming down over this, but we'll do that at the very end, which we're almost to. So adding in a tree here. Oh, I just splattered some green on his beard. It's because I'm, I feel like I'm rushing, going across and I keep hitting it on the lip of that tree there. Okay, that's one. Let's put in another one, like right here, but it's gonna go like past the sign, like through the sign. Okay. So you might have to concentrate really hard around that sign. I know I will. I'm gonna move as quickly as I can for you though. Boop, 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 boop. Do, 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 do. Sound effects while I paint. I'm a big music listener when I paint, especially if I'm like into like really into a painting, either one of my own paintings or into a commission that I'm like really concentrating on. Music just really helps. What do you guys like to do? Do you guys need silence? Do you like to, so this would come down here. So we definitely still have, you have to paint the sections that like would still appear like imagine this covering up part way which can be challenging which can be tricky go slow kind of watch where you're going in a little darker colors at the bottom a little bit so this would be like this would follow this line all the way over so this little section in here this can be tricky you know, to make it feel like it's really in front of it without feeling like you're painting like right around a shape. Go back to this side. I'm gonna thicken this up at the bottom a little bit here with a little bit darker color. Then I'm gonna put one more like right in here. But I'm gonna make it a little sh shorter. Mix up more color. And when you have two pines like coming up next to each other, don't be afraid to overlap them. Don't be like you have to feel like you have to avoid, you know, going over top of this one. If that's the natural progression of the tree, that's what it would be in real life. And they would run into each other, or overlap each other. make this a little taller. I want to get a little bit of a sparse section at the top. 
there. There we go. Trees can be so therapeutic to paint. All right, so now we have some depth and layers to our background. And the very last thing we have to add a little bit of detail to is our little puff ball right here. Now you don't have to have a puff ball on your hat. Maybe you didn't paint one. We're gonna go back to the gray that we used for the beard and the snow. And towards the center of the puff ball here, the part where it meets the brim, that's where it's going to be the most shaded. You're just gonna put, let's see if we can zoom in a little there. And you can switch brushes if you need a smaller brush. Like I will go to a size four, cause that's what I have. And I am going to just kind of coming out from the center and a little bit around the sides. There we go. And as that dries, those will soften. There's a lot of water in there. There we go. All right. You can add some more detail maybe to the edge of your... So on here, I'm gonna add a little bit darker kind of detail right here and give it like some knots and like where the planks might be joined together. So I'm just using a darker or that same uh, brown, just everything is dry now, so it'll stay. And then outline my little knobby here a little bit, put a little shadow underneath here. There we go. All right, and then last but not least, let's get a stamp on here. Hold on one second. All right, we have a bunch of sayings here. Merry Xmas, Merry and Bright. I think this little guy is, and you wanna make sure it like, fits on your sign, of course. Um, oh, that's funny, fa la 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 la. Mm, let me look at these. I think maybe this Merry Christmas one, I feel like will be big enough. We'll do a Merry Christmas. So I'm gonna take my silicone stamp I've chosen, I'm gonna Add it to my silicone block here. Now it's not moving, not going anywhere. And I am going to ink this baby up. Ink, ink, ink. Making sure it's nice and inked, especially on here. I'm using black ink. The gold probably wouldn't show up very well on here. All right, and I'm gonna line it up and I'm gonna commit. I'm gonna press it right down and pull it off. Merry Christmas, it's perfect. Oh my gosh, that's so fun. So now our little gnome is even giving us a little Merry Christmas. The only thing I would go back and add a little more of, which I forgot to do before, um, was a, is a few more, I think I would actually darken up around the nose here. So I'm using a pretty, a pretty dark kind of pinky color just to create even a little bit more shadow underneath. I know that looks super dark. Hold please, let's add some water and blend this out. And then under the brim of the hat here, creating a little shadow. And again, water blended out. There, I like that, but I feel like it just, it rounds it out a little bit more. So I added that same color combination. I just made it a little darker and picked up darker, less water. And then with his beard, oh my gosh, the mowing side. With his beard, I'm gonna use my liner brush. So these things are all optional. I think our guy looked great before, but with my liner brush, I'm gonna take some of that gray in a slightly darker shade, slightly, so still swatch your colors, and I'm gonna add a few details, like little hair 
shadows around the nose. I'm going to do like this shadow that kind of creeps away from his face. Do... So I'm just adding a few more details. Again, still staying very light, but these are even thinner strokes, so these are gonna translate very light. There we go. Excellent. All right, so again, you could add multiple layers on the hat and robes if you wanted to. I would, If I was giving this away as a gift, I would do that right now, but we're already here at almost 40 minutes, so. Um, Thank you so much. I'm Shana Searcy. It's always a pleasure painting with you. Uh, I just noticed that I did not do my nails, so they look terrible in this video. So sorry about that. But thank you for painting with me. I hope you really enjoy this um, gnome in his full background, wishing us a Merry Christmas with his stamped sign. I'll put a link to in the description to all the supplies and materials that we used here today. And I can't wait to see you for our next video.